Oh, because the projector's not on. I'm trying to We're going to be showing some. Yeah. yeah. Not, not slides, but a real website. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to close down all the stuff that has Yahoo <laughs> confidential information. So we have time. <laughs> Ready to start? I'm Sean Roberts. I'm from Yahoo. I'm Kamesh Pamaraju. I'm uh, with Dell. Um, I uh, run the Boston Meetup Group. Uh, started about the beginning of the year, and sort of had a regular cadence of meetups. Uh, and you know, I've been the primary organizer in terms of uh, scheduling people to come in and trying to figure out what topics, who's the audience, what's their interest. So we'll talk more about it, but that's been my experience. I'll share some of the challenges and some of the things that we've learned along the way. So um, we've been part, we started uh, working with uh, Citrix in the South Bay and uh, Piston in the North Bay and um, uh, I guess Rackspace as well uh, about a year ago. Um, I took over from uh, Citrix about, about 10 months ago, something like that. Um, and. Uh, even before we started doing that, we were talking about how do we reinvigorate, re re <laughs> thank you, <laughs> make, make them what uh, they used to be. Because um, they, they used to be really um, development hackathons and they kind of devolved into people were interested in, in uh, open stack architecture and um, marketing guys started showing up and they even had VMware guys start showing up. So it, it just got very scattered. So um, we immediately started brainstorming about how do we do this and also do our day jobs as well. One of the challenges uh, I faced, I started in February of this year, there were about 100 people that were registered on our meetup site. Uh, one of the challenges we had was there were a variety of people coming to these meetups. There were people that knew nothing about OpenStack. There were a couple, I'd say a couple in the beginning, now there are about 10 core developers. Actually Red Hat has uh, developers that are contributing to Keystone, they're contributing to Quantum, and they would come in, and and so we had this such a varied audience uh, that we had trouble trying to figure out you know, how do we split these things up. Uh, and and the, in, initially, the the number of people coming in was very low; it was about ten or fifteen. Uh, it started off with Dell doing a lot of uh, hackathon work. We were doing our own crowbar work. I don't know for those of you know, uh, we we have a tool called Crowbar, which is open source, uh, using which we deploy OpenStack. So we sort of did some hackathons around that. Uh, Prior to Di Diablo, yeah. we did a yeah, hackathon where we got a bunch of developers together uh, and we actually did a, a complete install and deploy of Essex and Diablo. So that was a different audience. There were a bunch of whole developers who were doing that stuff. Uh, the meetups, we sort of tried to extend it to that and then we found that all these people here just knew nothing about OpenStack. Uh, and that was one challenge. The other challenge was Boston is sort of like San Francisco, I'm sure, uh, is pretty spread out, right? There is the there is the 495-128 corridor that's west of Boston, and there's the, the downtown people. And when we started doing these meetups you know, out in the 128 corridor, nobody was coming in from the city. And so we had to figure out, just like you guys did it north, north and south, right? I mean, you have one in San Francisco and one up in the Bay Area. Yes. Is that how you have it? So we sort of did the same thing. We ended up having a, uh, a venue either in, in Cambridge, um, somewhere in the Harvard, Harvard University area, and lately, we've started to use the, uh, the Microsoft Nerd Center. Microsoft has been very gracious. They've, they've given us the venue, and that's really working out great. And all the local startups, all the people in the Boston, Cambridge area, find that a fantastic location. So our, our OpenStack Foundation party, we did it there a few weeks ago. And we had a, the best ever attendance, because we told there was an open bar. Uh, so we had like 70 people show up that day. And that was great. And then uh, we were trying to figure out the other location. So we ended up in Newton. Uh, which is sort of towards the one, 128 corridor. So that's what we're doing. We're doing sort of, um, uh, we're doing one month in Newton, one month in Cambridge. So we're sort of splitting between the two and 
It's working out fine so far, but it's still a challenge. There are some people who say, yeah, if it's, I don't want to have a split group, but that's what it's turning out to be. So and I'll, I'd like to hear your views on it, Sean, on, on how you're dealing with that. Uh, but those are some of the things we're seeing. Yeah, so um, I, I never want to turn anybody away from uh, <coughs> becoming possibly a new user and expanding the user base of OpenStack. That uh, should be one of the core fundamentals that we're always trying to encourage. Um, should help all of us that are uh, already using OpenStack by expanding it further and further. So um, that's been a consistent problem. Um, it turned it turned off a lot of the devs that were showing up and um, DevOps guys, um, Dev and Ops. Um, so um, what we evolved into doing, and we started talking about this about a year ago, and it took us a little while to, uh, for me to uh, actually implement it. Um, was uh, we we broke out the beginning session in um, and the a hackathon session into two different uh, meetings. Um, there are actually two different meetup pages now. Um, there's actually three meetup pages, pages now that I don't even know in my head. Um, so the beginning session is um, uh, Boris Minsky from Francis has been kind enough to offer to uh, run them and he does some training and so there's a good synergy in what he actually does as a business. He does more than just that. It's part of his business. So uh, they've been kind enough to uh, do that and I think uh, it's likely in the other areas you'll probably find some other integrators and or um, guys in the training that might be interested in helping you guys out as well to do the same thing. It's, it's what they do. Um, get more customers, which completes the cycle. Um, so uh, right next door we have um, a hackathon. Um, what has happened, uh, we go back, back to the beginning. Um, what was actually going on with the meetups evolved into were just a bunch of guys from uh, uh, Rackspace and uh, NASA that were trying to get OpenStack to work. So it evolved into, rather than just meeting up in people's houses, it evolved into meetups and uh, it went on and on. But originally they were just meant to be hacks. Um, so that's what we're getting back into doing. Um, I'm actually uh, been talking with some of the guys now that we've sort of established to um, get uh, Jesse and Vish and some of the other guys that are now at Nebula to get them to start coming back because some of the guys from this team need to start coming back down. Um, but what I'd really like to do is to expand that idea to the other locations like LA, Boston, DC, Seattle, and to start breaking off and start uh, really give the guys that come from the summit that are very interested in what do I do next. Um, I've got some ideas or I signed up to be partially responsible for the blueprint um, or I want to help drive this blueprint, but I don't really know where to even do it or how to get help. This would be a good forum for them to do that. Um, so uh, what we uh, started talking about is uh, as, soon as, uh, <laughs> as soon as I tried to get our developers to show up to these meetings, they're like, 7 o'clock, and we're like, crazy, I'm not doing that. So, um, so it became obvious pretty quickly that for the guys that are doing this as a job, we need to treat it as an extension of what we do as work. So um, the same day, we now have two hour uh, advanced, we call them DevOps meetups, um, where we actually talk about blueprints, um, typically blueprints. And the intention is uh, from this summit, um, this has happened basically over the last uh, three to four summits, we get a lot of great ideas um, about, you know, maybe half, 25% of them turn into something, get people's commitment. There's some others that are just kind of outside the range of what people have the time or ability or they just can't wrap their head around it. But there are some people that are really interested in pushing it forward and they get pushed to the next summit. And then people talk about it again and it gets pushed to the next summit. <laughs> so um, the intention is to um, try to give these places a home and to um, uh, talk about them and work on them um, in these DevOps meetups. And um, I already have a list of about 35 that I've gathered already. So um, the, the idea would be that obviously there's not enough uh, time for the next six months for us to just to do it in Sunnyvale, nor I do, do I have the desire to do that, is to spread the, the joy amongst all the different meetups and then to um, have us either use WebEx or some other great video conferencing system so that um, I could participate in the Boston DevOps and you guys could participate in ours. And um, the Seattle guys don't feel like driving, or excuse me, San Francisco guys don't feel like driving down. They can just put WebEx in and you know have the, so almost the same experience. But the idea being that um, a little bit more than 
pop it into IRC a couple times in the next six months that we could actually do a face-to-face -face and get people to actually commit to uh, at least talking about, if not showcasing, well, yes, I submitted this to a friend last week saying, well, I was coming here, and uh, this is my intention. I'm looking for people that are going to sign up and help me uh, push this movement through for, um, you know, in this case, would be Grizzly. So, uh, so. Yeah, so, so the other thing, um, I mean, this is great for dev and ops and, one of the one of the goals I had for myself was to try and build a user group, right? Uh, which is hard to find <laughs> in the open yeah. tech community. But that's what I started off with uh, with doing in the Boston area was to try to find um, actual users, whether they're infrastructure users or application developers or solution architects, and start to bring them together and start to ask them about or get them together to sort of talk about what the challenges are in terms of bringing up OpenStack deployments, whether it's development or ops, or just deploying applications on top of OpenStack. Um, so there are people that show up. Um, in fact, in the last summit, in the last meetup we had, there were at least four or five solution architects from various companies. These are guys that actually build applications on top of cloud. And we were talking about high availability next session. And, and of course, there were infrastructure guys and there were developers that were talking all about the nitty gritty stuff about what happens under the covers. Uh, but these guys were saying, okay, what about this? I mean, how do I think about it from an application perspective? You know, how do I do this, that, or the other? And I see a dire need. I don't know if we can collect uh, our combined forces from various um, meetups to see if we can start building up that user community. Uh, I don't see that happening that much, but I think as we start to move to the next level of adoption of OpenStack, uh, we need to start doing that, I think. Uh, and the whole, in fact, the Boston, uh, meetup group is called the Boston user meetup group. It's supposed to be a user meetup group, but it ten tends to be a mixture of, like I said, developers, advanced developers, people that know nothing about OpenStack and these kind of application developers. Uh, so the way, this is where our mind is going too. I think we need to start to split up the meetup groups, have an advanced, uh, you know, hackathon type of guys that come and do development work, do blueprints and stuff like uh, what Sean is talking about and have a 101 type of thing. In fact, I did get a message from one of the meetup guys just yesterday. Uh, and he said, I sign up for every meetup group, but I don't show up because I look at the agenda and it says some keystone authentication, blah, blah, blah. And I don't care about, I don't, I don't even know what that is. I want to learn more about what OpenStack is. He sent me that note and said, you know, can you set up a session where we can actually talk about that stuff? So that begs the question, right? Do we need to have a, a 101 session that continues to keep running in parallel and a dev ops oriented hackathon type of thing. And then I think very importantly, given where we are with OpenStack, uh, some sort of a user group thing that we have to build. I don't think we can just do it in the Boston area alone. It needs to happen across, across all meetup groups in the US and across the globe. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. It, I'm tempted to say that, um, that it's supported by or um, the, strictly users could show up to the hackathon and we could kind of veer off and talk about that as well as, because um, it's it's very impromptu, uh, at least up to this point, which is, I, I think we need to add a little bit of an agenda, I think, thing, yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we tend to sometimes talk about, well, you know, if we had beer, then we'd really be distracted and get nothing done. Um, so uh, I don't want to get too regimented, but I think uh, that might be a, a time where we could, uh, break off because the, the guys that are going to be writing code likely won't be too excited about the guys that are yeah. just want to talk about um, uh, user experience and uh, how to, but there would be some of the right people there to, you know, bounce ideas off of as well. So, go for it. They're going to ask, they're going to ask me to tell you. You might want to use, use the, the mic. The mic oh, the sorry. Stuff. <laughs> These are recording it. Turn on the mic. There's a question there. There, oh, you, there you go. So no, but so the, those agendas have already been starting. So in, in the email threads that happen, yeah, if you know, they're they're already there, just not for the overall group. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. The the other sure. thing. Uh, so we did a uh, day long virtual hackathon um, at Dell. You know, we sort of uh, we had like six different locations around the world. We had a virtual IRC channel going. There was a Skype channel going. And we had exactly the same problem. 
there were people that wanted to know about Crowbar, about OpenStack, how to deploy this stuff, just at a high level. And there were people, there were developers that were think, you know, talking about how to, how to do HA, you know, how do you build some kind of the new stuff. So we ended up doing two parallel sessions. The ones that are sort of on 101 focused were much more structured. So we actually had a presentation type um, you know, mechanism to get those going. Uh, and then we had Q&A sessions, just like a regular sort of a mini conference, if you will, that was, that was mainly online. Uh, and the, the developer stuff was really more IRC. We actually had a, a, a phone session. We had a conference line, actually a couple of conference lines open. And we had topics that we had selected upfront. And throughout the day, we said, okay, for the, for, the, for the morning session, we will talk about this topic, this topic, this topic. We, we selected those. And then we had uh, moderators uh, that knew about that topic that would become the, the main sort of people that were driving that session. So that worked great for the, for the developers. And you know, for the beginners and people that wanted to learn about OpenStack, the structured sessions really worked very well. Uh, they were more slideware, introductory, there were demos, we were showing them how the dashboard would work, you know, how would you deploy OpenStack, how Crowbar works, uh, and there were lots of Q&A sessions that followed. I, I think that worked great from a virtual point of view. We also had um, actual physical locations in four different cities at, at the same time. Uh, that, something like that, uh, maybe we might want to do that because there are six months between two summits. You might want to think about organizing if you have a certain topic or an area that we want to focus on uh, from an OpenStack perspective, we could think of doing something like that. Like a collaborative hack. Collaborative hack, um, or it could be a, a more of an educational, you know, if you want to have users come and adopt OpenStack, maybe there's a couple of hot burning topics that they want to learn about. Uh, then you say, okay, you know, here, if deployment is an issue in OpenStack, you know, here's how, here are the things you need to consider. Here are some tools for you to look at. So that would be very, very useful as well. Okay. Let me unmute myself. Um, so uh, I, I was going to, um, for those that haven't seen Meetup Pages and uh, maybe haven't seen what we've been doing in Sunnyvale, um, I was just going to show the way that we've structured it. Um, yes, please. So uh, I'm not on the East Coast, I'm not on the West Coast, I'm in the uh, Chicago. So any advice for the Greenfield? I'm not sure how much activity is going on in the space. I certainly know there's some customers like Argon, et cetera, doing some work. Any advice you would give for uh, kind of a Greenfield, you know, probably 101 centric, know your audience, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and meet toward your audience capabilities. Yeah. Any suggestions maybe in Chicago based on that profile? We don't have any meetup groups in Chicago currently, correct? Well, or yes, right. So, yeah. so you're asking about starting one. Starting one. Actually, yeah. So I, yeah. I signed up as quickly as said, we're in process. Yeah, the, now we're starting. one thing to be aware of is the, um, the meetup pages and Launchpad and Git are totally separate. I so, know, I know. oh, okay. What worked for us, uh, when I started back in February, January, February timeframe, okay. we had about, I'd say about 120 registered members on the meetup site. Right. Today we have 300. And I think the reason why we had such a, such a dramatic increase in, in not only registration but participation was A, we had regular cadence. Okay. We said no matter who shows up, we're having a meetup, yeah. right? And then you also have some topic, and initially all the topics were 101. We said, hey, you know, we're going to come and talk about what OpenStack is, what's happening in the community, what, what are the different projects within it, where all the summits that are happening. And, you know, we sort of focused on those initially for the first two. Uh, and then once we started doing that, I saw a dramatic increase in people just registering. Right. That's one. The, the other thing, you need to have some sort of a marketing, you know, strategy around how do you, how do you make people aware that this is happening. The meetup sites are great. 
Um, what I personally do is I have my own blog page. So uh, every time there is a meetup, I sort of take photographs, I write up about what the blog was, what the meetup was all about. I take pictures, sometimes videos, uh, and then I do my blog post and, and do tweet. I tweet it, I let the community members know about it, and then that's how the word spread. And, and with, even within the meetup groups, there's a lot of interaction. It, in Boston, we have lots of other cloud groups. Yeah. We have Cloudy Mondays. Yeah. Yeah, we have virtualization meetup groups. So word gets around within the meetup community. And, and, uh, and we keep the, and I'll show you the meetup group in Boston too. And we, we sort of, we're very clear about what the agenda is. Right. Um, you know, you, and the other part that we, we were successful in doing was to get sponsors, yeah. right? You, you need to get somebody to sponsor for the drinks. You need to find a place, yeah. <laughs> right, uh, a venue. Yeah. And we looked at all, all kinds of different places. We looked at churches. We looked at, um, you know, universities. Um, Harvard was gracious enough to give us uh, some rooms initially. Uh, the Microsoft Nerd Center uh, is now what we have uh, finalized on in the last six months. Uh, so if you look around Chicago, there will be lots of places, you know, universities, high schools. Uh, but the key is to find that, that magic location which works for the majority of the people. It'll be hard for a big city like Chicago. Well, you wrote it, right? Yeah. You wrote it, yeah. yeah. That's exactly what we ended up doing. So you need some sort of a promotion strategy. You need to have regular cadence. You need to focus on 101 stuff initially. Right. And that'll start attracting more, you know, people that are already doing stuff in OpenStack. Then you can start to break out. You know, you can say, let's have a more, right. you know, more nerdy sessions and more hackathon type of stuff. So that's what worked for us. Yeah. Just to, to what you said, that the, the, the OpenStack Foundation, now that it's in place, it's, it's also thinking about, we had a session yesterday, uh, thinking about how to help, especially with regards to the uh, promotion part. Because right now, you have to go to meetup.com, to uh, basically. Yeah. It's, uh, a lot of the events are not visible on openstack.org, so we, will have, we, will, we want to have, and we're working on having um, a, a place where you, you can go community.openstack.org where it will sit, but where you will go and see what the events are around the world at the time and or and select where you want to go and it will be relevant and close to you. And yeah, and the suggestions were all, these are, these are all the suggestions. The one that I would add, just an excuse since you're here, one piece of content that you can bring home and to, to bootstrap is to, to take one of the presentations that you saw, they will be online, that you saw that you liked, you can replicate it at home content that you've already seen and, and you can do it yourself at the end of the day. Yeah, the, the, the other thing apart from promotion is one of, one of the challenges we saw was, you know, our meetups are usually in the evenings, right? 6.30, 7 o'clock. After and work. After work and, and sometimes people that live far away in Boston area, sometimes in Nashua, New Hampshire, or out in Worcester, it's an hour and a half drive to get to even the, the first location, right? So I've had people that would call me up and say, that's a long drive. Is, is there a way we can, we can do it online? Can you have a, you know, a WebEx session or some video session? So we are started to experiment a little bit with that. It's kind of hard. Uh, you know, in both locations, we have Wi-Fi. So it, it kind of sort of works. I mean, in the last foundation uh, uh, meetup when we had the party, I wanted to get Rob Hirschfeld, who is a board member, to actually come in uh, over Skype. We wanted to do a video you know, half an hour, you know, just have him talk about the foundation. It didn't work. I mean, Skype didn't work. I mean, we had video problems. We ended up ju just doing an audio. So, I mean, that's some, we, we work, we need to find a way to make that work better. And if there's a, a nice video way or some way of getting remote people join in, conference calls aren't that great. You know, if, if it's yeah. some sort of a video conference, that'd be fantastic. But interesting yeah we need to explore options of uh, it the audio visual stuff hasn't been very very successful for us but many people have asked we want to be in these sessions but we can't be there physically what how can you help us right so we are looking at ways of making that possible yeah I think a smart board is a great idea we, we you'd actually brought that up before and I forgot <laughs> so 
so you, yeah, so you've been brilliant twice. <laughs> so yeah, that's it's really hard to collaborate um, when you, you don't have face to face and you don't actually see what they're doing. So without that, it makes it highly unusual. But the um, sorry, uh, the what we've gotten the um, the Sunnyvale partially from Yahoo's, but also from some people outside of Yahoo, they're uh, from Australia and Japan that really wanted to collaborate with us, and we haven't quite figured out how to make that happen yet. Um, so. Uh, I'm very interested in how we could have a reliable way of doing that. So um, if we do, if we're able to spin up this DevOps idea and start sharing a schedule around that yeah. we can all participate in basically just like different meeting rooms, because mm -hmm. it'll just be yeah. different cities and yeah. different times. So that would be extremely useful. And the other thing I would recommend um, as we do this more and more and coordinate new people like yourself who want to start stuff, it would be highly beneficial if the coordinators of the various meetup groups, at least within the U.S., get together once a month, maybe, uh, you know, have a conference call about what they're finding difficult to do, and, and especially people that are starting fresh. You know, they'll need a lot of content, a lot of help, a lot of advice on how to do these things, and not just for them, even for us, right? As we, as our, our communities grow, and we're seeing dramatic growth within our, within our Boston area, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how, how best to cater to the needs of all those groups. So it'd be very helpful to do that, too. stack-community that you can join, and um, the mailing list, the OpenStack uh, community mailing list, lists.openstack.org, you'll find it, it's called a community, and if you're, yeah, coordinators, I think should be there. Okay, great. It's a, I mean, it does not substitute the meet up, the meeting face-to-face -face or or the, the hangout type of thing, yeah. actually that, that would be cool. I mean, yeah, experience, yeah, I start so. experimenting somewhere at that informally yeah. with chats. Yeah, the, the other thing you will get as you start to you know, grow the community is you'll find sponsors. They'll come to you. It happened to us, right? Uh, as, as we started doing the OpenStack stuff, we had all kinds of companies. You know, Canonical came by. They actually flew somebody from, from uh, Texas to come all the way to, to you know, participate in the summit. We have uh, local companies that are starting to show interest, cloud technology partners, Arista Networks. Dell has always been a, a, a main contributor to it. Uh, Suse. So you'll start to find people, you know, pitching in. Yeah, so I had a question along that line. So let's assume I don't want to organize, but I'm willing to host. You know, so a nice facility that can hold 100 yeah. people in San Francisco. How do I sign up and say, I'll host the next one? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, there's no, uh, that's a great question. In fact, we would love to have people come and tell us, yeah. right? I mean, we had a tough time finding out a place to host these things. So we, we probably need some way of people saying, hey, you know, one way to do that is through the meetup site, right? right. So on the meetup yeah, site, uh, we, you can make a comment. You can say, hey, you know, we'd love to, you know, either sponsor the next meetup or host a location for you. That would be helpful. So Yeah, so the, actually There's that. There's to be a better way than just posting on the meetup site. Yeah, so actually, uh, I'm being a little brain dead. So yeah. the, uh, there is a need actually in San Francisco right now. That's part of the reason why the San Francisco meetups kind of petered off because some people, some companies moved around and they don't have the space anymore. So um, I think they have some of the space, but not for some of the larger meetings. So I think they'd be very interested in taking you up on your offer. So uh, the correct way is to go, you wouldn't figure this out unless you uh, you hear it from somebody. You know, it's being part of the secret club, right? Um, so uh, you go to the meetup page um, under OpenStack and you would uh, go find the organizers and you just send uh, there's an easy way of sending an email to the organizers through that, and that's the right way of doing it. But the meetup meet uh, page yeah. has an organizer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It's working quite well for us, you know. So. <laughs> well, I. Yeah. I've been a little unhappy because actually there's been these. Uh, some weird problems with like uh, coming here. So the meetups were supposed to happen actually tomorrow. Well, I canceled them. I go back. I canceled about a month uh, about a month ago. I go back last week. There's 30 people signed up for the dates that magically reappeared. So it's not been without its problems. Okay. 
So uh, I, I, I like it when it works. I don't like it when it doesn't. So uh, maybe it's a maybe we need to give them some money to get <laughs> career support. We were fortunate enough not to run into any of those kinds of issues so far, but it's it's worked out fine. I've made uh, I've made a lot of changes from time to time because we have so many meetups out in the future that are scheduled. Okay. So occasionally they just kind of magically revert. <laughs> okay. Can be a little frustrating. Yeah, there was yes, sir, Tristan. ideal world, um, we have a, a core project that manages the community for us, not Meetup. Um, and Meetup, I find, is it silos the information and, and we've been looking at how we can extract and, 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 and pull the information from the various Meetup groups using their API or whatever into a, into a portal of some sort that we can link to the foundation membership. And that's curated. Yeah. That we've talked about. And, and also, part of that we've been mentioning before, we've had dozen people in the last year that have asked me exactly the same question, how do I get started? Um, something we've been trying to get together is um, a wiki on that and some guidelines which don't work everywhere in the world because different cultural things, like beer works in Australia, doesn't work in, in other countries. Um, so that's something we really want to get going to to have help with uh, people like yourself and other people that want to get into it. Yeah. I, um, so I'd like to Steph a, a core Steph project. can boss me around and tell me what to do. I mean, I, I, as <laughs> long as we can figure out a great way that we can all kind of get done what we need to get done, yeah. I am not married to I'm anyone not, I'm not technology. I just want to get it done. Yeah. But, but a complementary to Meetup or, or something that would work with that because that mm -hmm. does work to, to alert other similar technology people or groups in the, in the area that you now have an OpenStack group. But it still does, it's, it's city bound, which doesn't work for us at all because we, we have a, an Australian group, but there's no way we can change that. They won't let us have, the meetup won't let us have an, an Australian group. It has to be Sydney, it has to be Melbourne, it has to be Perth, uh -huh. which have time zone differences. Yeah. So when we schedule meetups, the time zones are, are messed up across the country and things right. like that. So so it's been a little bit of a problem for us. Um, it would be nice to, for us to sort of look at ways around that that we've been looking at the last few days. Don't we have a, on the openstack.org, um, there's a page that lists all the, all the meetup groups around the world, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that'll sort of give you a snapshot of what's yeah, happening. There's, there's a lot out there. I mean, uh, true. Um, and, and, and it's it, it incre I, as I see it, it's, it's going to be increasingly difficult to manage and keep the communication channels open unless we sort of address um, the siloing of the, the the groups around the country or around the world. But I think we're on the right track. Yes, sir. You, you mentioned you mentioned that some of your uh, DevOps guys have um, um, kind of complained in the past, or maybe they're still complaining about the staying over time. Or ops complain. Why is that? <laughs> of course, yeah. So they're used to working to out. Around with <laughs> three phones on and on and on, and sweating all the time. I know, sweating. Uh, no, but um, about staying over over after work. Um, you I sort of you mentioned something about uh, being the extra two hours or coming back after work and staying for the the meeting. How how do you how are you changing that? How did you manage to convince them to stay? Uh, uh, how do I say this diplomatically? <laughs> uh, it, it's part of their job. Um, so they're responsible for um, uh, following through on their goals and their commitments. So this is one of the ways that they can get their job done. I'm, I'm perfectly fine if they can get their job done in two hours without community involvement. I think it's possible that if they can find, figure out a magic way of making that work and still making it work with the community without actually showing up these things, more power to them. The reality is it's not the way it works. So I'm perfectly fine with finding times that work for most people. Uh, if we're collaborating outside of Yahoo, there's a, a certain number of people that just can't show up during the day. There's a certain number of people that just can't show up at night. So um, we just have to, much like the time zone problem, we have to figure out a middle way. But people need to be involved in the community. They can't just say, I'm too busy. It doesn't work. If you're in the wrong line of business, if you're working at an open source project and you say, I'm too busy for the community, that doesn't play. So um, part of that is, um, you know, even though we're a very large uh, open source company, mostly r running on open source uh, projects, uh, there's, you know, occasionally you run into that. <laughs> so education.
heard that a different way because I'm not sure I understand. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. It, if you're working in an open source community, you have to engage the open source community. Otherwise, you end up forking your code. And then when you do decide to push it back, you know, it's a giant hairball. So, you know, it's, that doesn't work, unfortunately, for very long. Do you want me to show the GitHub site? Sure. So I can show mine after this. Uh, So, um, sorry, this over. Bless you. So, um, this is if you go to OpenStack, excuse me, uh, meetup.com and type in OpenStack, this is where you'd land. Um, so, uh, this is hard to do this way. So uh, we're running um, three different meetings. Um, you can actually go back into history um, to see past meetups, and you'll see that there's 72 past meetups. Um, this is one of the things that uh, curating this, this information would be really great, because there are comments that build up on here, and there's discussions, and it would be great to expose that and be able to search through it in some other way other than this, um, or in addition to this, at least. Uh, this works really well for us being able to find information for just meeting. Um, but you know, for other purposes like uh, mining it for like what you were showing previously, it, it doesn't have that way to do that at least easily. So um, so the, the beginner track is what most of the people show up for. Um, we have wow, what are we at? Because we're at about 1500. Oh no, we're up to almost wow. 1700. Largest, so. That's the largest meetup group, I guess, around the world. It, well, yeah, I mean, m a lot of the development's going on in the Bay Area, so yeah. it's you know, kind of, you know, a lot of PyCon guys are yeah. in, around our town. So um, we're gaining, uh, last last I checked, we're gaining about 20 people a week. Um, seems to be accelerating a little bit. Um, not everyone's truly active, so there's a lot of people that are just kind of looky-loos. Um, uh, I do have a problem with... Uh, about three quarters to half the uh, half the people show up. Um, the other half to a quarter don't show up for various good reasons. I haven't quite figured out how to. I don't necessarily want to term discourage people from signing up, but I'd really like if they actually showed up. <laughs> they can get kind of distracting. Um, every once in a while, almost everyone shows up. I'm like, oh, <laughs> kind of shocked. Um, but uh, the, uh, it is definitely um, if I have some topics specifically that um, gets people excited, I usually have a full house. And if I uh, make the effort to uh, publish it uh, at least two weeks and maybe even a month ahead of time, word gets around and it fills up. Uh, and most everyone shows up. Um, through here, and I, I generally, I go through a couple different mechanisms. I, I post to the, the actual subscriber list, the 1,700 people that are on here, and say, hey, guess what, in a week, a month, doing this. Um, I, uh, I tweet about it. Um, I send it to our internal mailing list. Um, I've been sending it to staff, although I'm not exactly sure what the right process is anymore. Okay. Right. So, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> so I've, uh, I've created a, um, a format because I, I got tired of trying to be a wordsmith and rewrite this stuff all the time and having it come out kind of gibberish because it's not like my primary thing to write. <laughs> so um, uh, basically what I've done is I've just um, come up with a generic format that's uh, applicable to um, all three of the meetups. And um, I just uh, uh, copy it, copy and paste it into the different ones and just say, hey, this is DevOps meetup. Um, there are two other kinds. Go look for them. They're over there. Um, and that, that's pretty much it. Um, the, the thing that's been uh, the biggest um, uh, biggest attractant is to um, for anybody to show up, and I, I can say this for myself as well, is um, publishing it ahead of, um, way in ahead of time, uh, making sure that we have a relatively consistent 
um, organization around it, that people know what they're walking into, that it's not, you know, I don't always start at 20 minutes late or 10 minutes early or something weird like that, or um, uh, make sure that the, the, uh, the room actually is the same as uh, what people expect it to be, because occasionally it will change, and uh, I've noticed that people, they see the first notification that goes out, and they don't see the other six <laughs> saying the room has changed. <laughs> so, um, uh, so uh, that is about it. So do you guys have any questions about, I don't know if how many people are actually familiar with Meetup or um, uh, interested in what this looks like or anything like that? Yeah, we use the same thing too. Yeah, so I can, I can show. I have done that. I yeah, that. I'd like to do more of that. I unfortunately, um, I just don't have the time to do that. So what I'd really love to do is to um, take the expertise that goes into these kinds of um, uh, large meetups <laughs> and um, and uh, spin that into that the expertise into these things so we can do it on a smaller scale and uh, maybe we could go with a company, maybe I can convince some of the guys at Yahoo Screen to do it, which I haven't been successful yet, but I'll keep plugging away at them. Um, and we could just contribute that skill set because we, we do, I don't know, something like a couple hundred videos a week. You know, they're all professional quality, so that's part of what Yahoo does. So I may be able to provide that as a service and then we can, I can just feed them the data and say, here, can you make it pretty? Because I don't have the time. <laughs> I use my blog, blog to do that. I've done some of that. The challenge with that is it's not always one person talking. We are always having a, some sort of an interactive conversation or a whiteboard session. And we are all very immature, uh, amateur, you know, photographers or videographers. So it turns out not to be such a great thing. <laughs> Both. I'm immature too, so yeah. we're all together. <laughs> 